Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Fellows and girls, have you ever had to stand firm for what was right? When the friends you palled around with all turned their backs on you and there you were, alone? Well, this is a story about a young lad named Mike who stood for what was right. He stuck by his guns when all of his pals were against him. Let's find out how it happened. Now, as our story opens, Bill is down at Tony's Fruit and Vegetable Market. Tony's an Italian, a fine man in every respect. But when his patience is tried to the limit, he gets angry like most of the rest of us. Let's drop in at Tony's store just as Bill enters. Ah, good morning, Bill. Good morning, Tony. How's the town's leading fruit and vegetable man this fine morning? <laughs> uh, Tony's a just a fine, Bill. Uh, you like some fresh fruit and vegetables this morning? Uh, yes, Tony. Uh, here's the order Mom gave me. Uh, half a dozen items on it. Yeah, that's a fine. Uh, Tony, have them for you in a jiff. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, three pounds of apple. Ah, uh -huh. uh, there she is. How's the family, Tony? Oh, they're just the finer, thanks. And my little bambino said they grow just to like a weeds. <laughs> uh, Mommy says she's a feed them so good, uh, they grow like crazy. <laughs> Almost Tony thinks they race each other to see who can grow up first. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's plenty of excitement at home with all five of the youngsters on the loose, huh? Uh, there's a three pounds of apples. And Tony throw in one more, uh, just the case the one she's a bad. Now, let's see. A dozen orange. Yeah, there's a plenty of excitement in the Tony's house when all the five bambinos are cut loose. <laughs> uh, but Tony's a like of children. Oop, now that orange she's got a black eye like my little Tony. <laughs> oh? Little Tony's got a black eye, you say? Now, three green peppers. Uh, yes, the little Tony's got a black eye in a school. Got a black eye in school, huh? Uh, fighting? Oh, he's not to fight. Uh, the teacher, she's asked him to name a three collective nouns. <laughs> Guess what he's a tell of the teach. <laughs> I haven't the least idea. What did he tell him? Well, a little Tony's a tell of the teach. A three collective nouns are a waste basket, a vacuum cleaner, and the fly paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's that got to do with the black eye, Tony? <laughs> well, everybody, she's a liar, even the teach. I thought he's a laugh at two. Only uh, he overdo it and uh, double up. And as he uh, double up with a laugh, he bang his eye on the corner of his desk. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> I tell a little Tony uh, that uh, that's what he's a get for laughing at his own a joke. Okay, Bill, here's your stuff. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, how much is that? Uh, for you, Bill, it's a one dollar even. There we are. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you come back often now, Bill. Uh, maybe next time, uh, little Tony, he's a black on the other eye, huh? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Oh, well, the boys, uh, what's on your mind? Uh, Tony, sell you some nice apples. Are uh, they good for the health? Tony, we'd like to know if you'd give us a couple of bucks for baseball uniforms. Yeah, a couple of bucks, huh? Well, Tony's not know about that. A uh, couple of bucks who won't buy much of a baseball suit. Well, who's the make-up of the team? All of us guys in the gang. If you give us a couple of bucks, then we can get a couple of bucks from each of the other stores we have. Uh, so then we'll have enough to buy our suit. Mm, I'm going to have to talk to your dad first. That's a lot of money. Oh, come on, Tony. You got lots of money hid in the sock. You won't miss a couple of bucks. Well, that's not the point. Tony thinks a grown-up person should hold the money till you buy the suits. Then he give. 
Why don't you say you don't want to give us the money? Come on, fellas, let's get out of here. Tony's a tight one. He wouldn't give us some money anyway. Yeah, but first Come let's on, help let's ourselves to some apples. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can't kind of have no apples to without it to pay. Here's a good one. Grab some, fellas. Go we'll show this guy he can't make a monkey out of us. He's a foreigner. Uh, how you can't deliver that fruit alone? Are uh, you taking my fruit? I call it the cops. Go ahead and call. They can't catch it. That's a bright to call a Tony a foreigner, eh? Huh? You come back into this store and you break your neck. <laughs> okay, knock it off, you guy. Hey, 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 hey hold on. Hey, no, you got something to say, Fatso? Yeah, Ed. We ought to fix Tony for not chipping it in. For our uniform. Yeah. That's right, Fatso. I say, let's wreck his storm. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Right. hey, when's a good time? When's a good time? How about Wednesday afternoon after school? Y'all be there? Yeah, yeah I'll yeah. be there. Yeah. 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 We'll show that foreigner who's boss in this town. Yeah. When we want something, we're going to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. What's the matter with you, Mike? You ain't said a word. Ain't you in favor? No, I'm not. Why not? I don't like the idea of wrecking Tony's store. Okay, come on, knock it off. What's the matter, Mike? You turned soft or something? I'm not turning soft, Ed. But what's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. And this would be wrong. Another thing, you guys shouldn't have taken any fruit from Tony's store today. Now we'll never get our suits. No? That's what you think. That's right, sure. We'll get them all right. Sure. I take it you ain't going to help us wreck Tony's store. You've got the idea, Ed. I'm not helping. Count me out. I don't think it's a job I can take any part in. What's going on, pretty boy? What's the matter? You ain't chickened out on us before. What's more, I'm the boss of this gang, and I say you ain't backing out, see? No? Says who? I'm leaving, and you nor nobody else had better try to stop me. If you rat us, buddy, we'll beat you up. You can't make me do something I don't want to. I said I'm leaving. Okay, Mike. But I'm telling if you go out that door, you're out of the gang for good. Well, what's your answer? That's the whole story, Henry. I'd like you to help straighten the gang out. They're not so bad, but since Ed's been the leader, they've followed him the wrong way. Well, I'm sure we can find a way to solve the problem, Mike. Tell me, is uh, Ed really a bad fellow, or is he just a bully? Oh, I don't know, Henry. He's always got a chip on his shoulder, especially with me. I don't know why, but I guess he's not all bad. I see. Say, Mike, aren't you afraid of being seen on the street with me since the gang threatened to beat you up if you talked? Nah, I can outrun all of them. I'm not afraid of them one or two at a time, but I can't fight the whole gang. Anyway, I'm not worried. They gotta catch me first. <laughs> That's the spirit, Mike. Always stick up for what's right, no matter what it costs. I'll see what I can do to help. How? Well, I don't know yet. Let's go talk to Bill Jefferson. He's good at figuring out things. Mike, I want to commend you. It's not always easy to stand up for what's right, but it's the sign of a real man. Well... It was worth it, Bill. Just to hear you say that. What do you think we should do about all this, Bill? You got any ideas kicking around? Yeah, I think so. Mike, you say the gang's going to meet in the old barn Wednesday after school, huh? Yeah, that's right. They're going to set up their plan to wreck Tony's store. All right, let's the three of us be there to meet them. Hey, look! Huh? It's a 
strangers. Let's get out of here. You keep that door closed, Henry. I'll take care of the windows. Quiet down, fellas. Quiet down now. Nobody here is going to get into trouble as long as he behaves himself. You hear me? Okay, now quiet, quiet down. down. Quiet down. We're not here to arrest anybody. Are you sure about that, Ranger? That's right. I just want to talk to you, that's all. Come on, Ed. Knock off the noise and listen, won't you? Okay, you guys. Listen, let's listen to what they have to say. Okay, we'll listen. Let's start off with a question. How badly do you fellas want those baseball uniforms? Now, what do you think is the best way to get them? Uh, Work, maybe. That's right, work. Hard, honest work. Is that what you fellas are planning to do? What's the matter? You lost your tongues? I take it that you were meeting here this afternoon to plan various ways you could get your uniforms, such as odd jobs and after-school jobs. Is that right? Come on, speak up, Ed. You're the leader. Okay. You know why we're meeting here. Mike told you all about what we're going to do. And why? Because he's a stool pigeon, that's why. Don't you call me a stool pigeon, Ed Blake. Why not? You ran it on us, didn't you? And I told you we'd beat you up if you did. Sure. We'll get you for it, too. I'm not afraid of any one of you alone. But I can't fight the whole bunch at once. And you, Ed, you're the leader. I'll take you on any time you want. Or are you scared? Scared? Who's scared? Of you? Yeah, you won't fight me by yourself. Yeah, we'll see about that. Come on, I'll fight you right here. Come on, step out and fight. Okay, Ed, you're asking for Oh, wait for a minute, it. fellas. There'll be no bare fist fighting. Henry, you jump in the car and bring the boxing gloves from the gym. But, Bill, do you think you ought to let them fight? Yeah, Henry, I do. That's the best way to settle this argument. I'll referee. It'll be three two-minute rounds and let the best man win. After it's over, let the fellas choose who they want as leader, Ed or Mike. Okay, Bill, I'll get the gloves. Wait a minute. I ain't fighting unless it's bare fist. No sissy fighting for me. All right. We'll let the gang decide. What'll it be, boys? Bare fists or gloves? Gloves. 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 I guess it's gloves, Bill. Well, Ed, all the fellows have voted that you and Mike should use gloves. What do you say? I say I ain't fighting unless it's bare fist. And that's final. I'm leaving. What do we do now? Fellas, let me ask you something. Do you still want to wreck Tony's store? No, we don't. All right. Let's forget about this whole thing. Meanwhile, I'll do all I can to help you get your uniforms. Is that agreeable? Come on, then, fellas. Let's go home. We'll find out a better way to get our uniforms. Okay, Mike. Come on, you guys. Yeah, come on. Hey, on. What now, Bill? I think I'll go over and have a talk with Tony. I'll meet you back at headquarters after I've seen him. Hello, Bill. Uh, I guess it's a time for Tony to close up at the shop. Uh, she's been a pretty good a day today. Make lots of money for Rosie, the little bambinos. I'm huh? uh, glad to hear it, Tony. Uh, go right ahead and count your cash. I can wait. Oh, no, no. Tony can uh, do that later. Uh, maybe you want to talk to me, huh? Yeah, Tony. I would like to have a chat with you for a few minutes. Uh, what she's about, Bill? The boys' club. Yes. And uh, their baseball uniforms. Oh. Tony, you've taken a lot from this gang, but believe me, there's no greater investment in the world than to help in the development of these young fellas. We never know what great things will come from it. Sure, today they're roughnecks. Tomorrow they'll be fine young men and great citizens. What do you say, Tony? Tony, he's not to decide. Go ahead and talk some more, Bill. Oh, I know they gave you a bad time, made some very unkind remarks, but I've talked with them about this, a whole bunch of them, and they're sorry, Tony. It won't happen again. 
Uh, how you found out about the, what happened? Uh, Mike told me all about it. I don't have no thing against these boys. I like them. And maybe Tony buy all of the uniforms if somebody take a charge and see that my money's not a waste. Oh, no, Tony. You wouldn't have to buy all the uniforms. I want to do it, Bill. All right. Maybe I can get one of the boys' fathers to take charge. Uh, Mike's dad, for instance. How would that be? Tony like it better if you do it, Bill. Okay, Tony. Ah, uh, yes, well... Well, Tony, he's understand of the boys. He's a one to show. He's a real American. And what's more, he's a forgive. He's also forget. Like a good Christian. Patty O'Rourke, as I live and breathe. Come on in. Well, the top of the evening to you, Bill, me boy. How are you? Just fine, Pat. Now pull up a chair, will you? Uh, me can feet ain't what they used to be. <coughs> the pound of the beef gets to be a bit of a chore these days. What do you mean, Pat? You're in good physical condition, aren't you? Aye, uh, that I am. Fit as a fiddle. All but these feet are mine. Uh, I bring you bad news, Bill, me boy. Oh? What's going on now, Pat? Now don't get your blood pressure up now till I tell you this. Tony's store was wrecked this afternoon after school. Tony's store? Who did it? Young Ed Blake, the leader of the Richmond Hill Gang. You mean he wrecked the store all by himself? Aye, that's right, Bill. And he did a mighty fine job of it, too. And it's me bound and duty to pick up the lad and take him in. That's ah, too bad. Looks like he's spoiled it for the rest of the lads in the gang now. Uh, that's what I'm wondering about. And uh, that's why I stopped in here to see you, Bill. What do you mean, Pat? Bill, you know me pretty well, I think. I'm just a soft-hearted cop. I don't believe that Ed's a bad boy at heart. He's just got a chip on his shoulder, that's all. Somebody's got to knock it off. Now, I can do that all right. But it wouldn't straighten the lad out. Now, I thought that maybe you could step into the picture and show the lad what he's wrong. Would you do that for an old Irish friend? <laughs> okay, Pat. And I think I've got an idea how we can help young Ed Blake. Don't arrest him till I give you the word. Hey, Bill. Bill, wait a minute. Okay, fellas. Hey. Hi, Phil. Henry and I want to talk to you. Sure, Mike. What's on your mind? Uh, you better tell him, Henry. Bill, Ed Blake's wrecked Tony's store this afternoon. Yeah, I know. You know? Who told you? Patty O'Rourke. He was on his way to Ed's house to take him in. Ah, uh, that's tough. Are they going to arrest him? No, Mike, not yet. Pat asked me to help Ed, and I said I would. Huh? Well, how are you going to do that, Bill? I've got an idea. You fellas get the gang together in the old barn at 7.30 this evening and wait for me. Right now, I'm going over and talk to Tony. I don't think it'll do much good. Tony saw her. You can't blame him. I guess I would be, too. Anyway, we'll see what we can do. I'll see you at 7.30. Okay. Well, well, bye, Bill. So long, Bill. No, Bill. Tony's to change his mind. I would have put not one red cent in the baseball uniforms. Oh, those boys are no good. And here's the proof. Oh, look at this to me. <laughs> no, I don't have much talking point right now, Tony. But I'd like to change your mind for you if you'll let me. Now, what do you mean, Bill? Tony, it wasn't the gang. It was Ed. Why should all the lads have to suffer because of one? This is hard for you to take, I know, but... I don't think that Ed's essentially a bad boy, either. He's just got a chip on his shoulder. And he's got a chip, all right. Now, look, Tony. I'd like you to stop working and go home for the evening. Stop work? Ha! <laughs> That's what a Tony likes to do, too. But who's going to clean up this mess? Leave that to me, will you, Tony? It'll be cleaned up. That's a promise. And the damage will be paid for. That's another promise. You mean uh, that's a promise like you make it before? You tell Tony you fix it all up and the boys are they sorry? <laughs> now look what's happened. 
Yeah, I know, Tony. My promises don't look so good in the light of what's happened, but give the gang one more chance, will you, Tony? Okay. Tony's to do that. You know, Bill, a Tony's to try to be American. He's to try to be a Christian. I'm going to try to forgive and to forget. But this Ed, he's not to let me do it. Why? Why? Tell me why. I don't know, Tony. That's something I've got to find out. Sometimes it takes a lot of love and patience to win a boy like that. It's like the Bible story of the love of a father for his prodigal son. It took love and patience and prayer over a period of many years. When there wasn't one soul in the world who cared a rap whether he lived or died, the boy knew his father still loved him. And that's what finally saved him. You know, Bill, you always make a Tony feel better. Since you talk to me, Tony's not feel so bad. You got a lot of love and patience. We'll see. it off. Bill wants to talk to you. Uh, fellas, I don't have to tell you by now what's happened. Because Ed did what he did. Your baseball uniforms are probably out. Okay, but we didn't wreck Tony's store. Why should Tony take it out or not? Yeah. Well, Tony figures that Ed's a part of the gang. Anyway... I've figured out a way to change Tony's mind. Okay, if you quiet down, I'll tell you what it is. First thing is this. Tomorrow's Saturday. What do you say we all go over to Tony's store first thing and clean up that mess? That went over like a lead balloon, Bill. Why should we? We didn't do it. That's true. Two fellas were in on the first visit to Tony's store, weren't you? In Tony's mind, the whole gang's involved. He's right, you guys. I guess we ought to do it. But Bill will help us get our uniforms if we do? I don't know. Right now, Tony is against helping at all. But we're not doing this for the uniforms. We're doing this because Tony's a friend and neighbor. And because it's the Christian and the American thing to do. I don't know. It's an awful mess to have to clean up. Listen, you guys, Bill's promised Tony the store would be cleaned up. And if we don't do it, Bill will have to do it himself. Now, how about that? Okay, I'll be there. I'll work hard, too. Count me in. Me, too, boy. How about the rest of you guys? Are you in? Sure. 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 The boys that they got at the store looking like a brand new. <laughs> and they work a hard, too. Tony's a like of that very much. Well, I'm glad you do, Tony. Maybe it'll make up for some of the things that have been done. I tell you, you call the boys together. There's something I want to tell them. All right. Hey, gang, stop work and gather around. Uh, Tony's got something to tell you. I want to say a thank you for a good work. And because you're such a good and nice kids, I'm going to buy your baseball uniforms all by myself. Boy, these sure are keen suits. Tony must have put out a lot of money for these. Yeah, I hope we can play as good as we look. Yeah, Yeah, even Fatso here looks good. (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh, it's Ed. Probably looking for trouble. Oh, maybe not. Don't interfere, Henry. This had to come sooner or later. Hello, Ed. Want something? Uh, Yeah. You're not in the gang, Ed. Now that we've got our uniforms, you want back, huh? Uh Uh-oh, party's getting rough, Bill. Quiet, Henry. Let them blow off steam. This is our clubhouse, Ed. What do you want? Well, I'd like to come back into the club. 
I'm afraid not, Ed. Not only for what you did to us, but most of all, for what you did to Tony's store. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm sorry about that. Sorry, all right. Does that change anything? No, we don't want you. Uh, please, the kids. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, it's Tony. Uh, maybe you'll take Ed back. If Tony asks you nice, uh, please. Why, oh, Tony? Uh, take him back. Tony, oh. you want us to let Ed back in after what he did to you? Yes, Mike. He's a coming to see me. He says he's going to work for me and pay it all back. So, let him back in the club. Tony, he's even a bad baseball uniform for him if you let him in. I'm sure you boys can forgive and forget if Tony can do it, huh? Yeah. Yeah, sure, Tony. If you can do it, so can we. Ain't that right, gang? So, Ed, you're back in the gang. Thanks, Mike. Now, one more thing. Yeah? You and I have got to settle things between us. Settle it? Yeah, with gloves. Oh, what for? Because I want it. Well, I don't want to fight you, Ed. But if you want it, all right. Bill, you want a referee for yeah, us? All right, fellas. You're about even so far. Now, this is the last round of the three. Come out, fight. Back to your corner, Mike. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ted, that's all. Fight's over. Here, Ed. Let me help you up. Well, that was a hard punch, that last one, wasn't it? It sure was. How you feeling now? Okay now, Bill. The last one really made you see stars. I'm sorry, Ed. I didn't want to fight you. But you forced me into it, so... That's all right, Mike. I didn't want to fight you either. But Tony wanted me to do it. Another thing, I I guess I needed a good beating, too. Sort of square things up. I want you and me to be buddies, Mike. How about it? Ed, from here on in, we're buddies. think with all the record card out in here. That looks like I missed the party. <laughs> uh, yes, the party. You missed the party, but uh, you can stay for the refreshment. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and Pat did stay for the refreshments, and they all had a wonderful time. Indeed, it was like the celebration the father in the Bible story gave when his son came back from a far country, as the Irishman, the Italian, the Rangers, and the boys welcomed Ed Blake back to the gang. We'll see you next week for more adventure with... Rangers!